Hello YouTube, I'm Paul James Caden, and this is The Spirit Side, where we talk about all things paranormal, conspiracy theories, and take a look at current events with a balanced and spiritual perspective. In this episode, we are going to hear a true ghost story. This is one of those tales that I collected back in the mid-1980s, and I call it Duel with the Devil. The autumn leaves are ablaze with fiery reds and oranges, but the colors were neither peaceful nor scenic to Brad Johnson as he drove down the one-lane country road that fall afternoon. But rather, the flame-like foliage seemed to reflect the burning anger he had inside. Anger because life seemed cruel, unfair, and against him at every turn. In the span of just one short week, he had been terminated from his job and lost his girlfriend to another man. Brad was 20 years old, trying to make it on his own, and all life could hand him was heartache and trial. It all seemed so damn unfair. The car came to a sudden stop as Brad pulled over on the narrow shoulder of the road. He shut off the engine with a fitful turn of the ignition key. He then reached into the back seat and grabbed the chilled six-pack he had purchased for this melancholy occasion. Stepping out of the car, he climbed a small embankment that led to a slightly overgrown path leading into the woods. Just beyond a small group of trees in the distance, the path led into a small clearing in the woods. It was a quiet and private place where Brad and his friends used to party when they were younger. In the center of the clearing, there was a circle of stones where someone had once built a campfire. The stones had always been there, and Brad and his friends used to joke that it was built by some satanic cult who made human sacrifices in the woods. As Brad stood now, sipping his first bottle of beer, he pondered his life and all that had recently happened. He tried to be a hard worker and a good person, but it just seemed that nothing ever seemed to go his way. All of his friends had made good and were happy. Many didn't even live in town anymore, but they had moved away to attend college or to take on good jobs. Brad felt defeated and alone. As the feelings of turmoil began to build inside of Brad, he started to talk aloud. He railed against life's unfairness, his broken heart, his girlfriend, the man who stole his girlfriend, and even God. Was there even such a thing as God, he wondered? Was there some magical grandfather in the sky who had it in for him? Maybe God was not good, as some claimed. Maybe he was an angry, spiteful deity who tested people by taking from them and beating them down in life. His darkly thoughts went round and round, when suddenly his eyes fell upon the stone circle in the middle of the clearing. It was then that Brad remembered how he and his friends used to joke about the satanic cult in the woods. Then slowly, his thoughts began to morph into something else. Maybe it wasn't God that was sabotaging him in life. Maybe it was someone or something else. What if there was a devil... What if there was a malignant entity called Satan? And what if this terrible being was responsible for all of the re recent woes in his life? The thought seemed to captivate Brad's mind as he sipped at his beer. Surely, if this evil creature called Satan did exist, he was a real bastard. After all, he had caused Brad to lose his job and tempted his girlfriend with another man. If Satan did exist, he definitely deserved a serious ass-kicking. And Brad was just the guy to do it. After all, he worked out often and had a strong, fit body. And back in the day, Brad had the reputation of being the town badass and tough guy. Feeling angry and cocky, Brad began to rail aloud once again. 
Only this time, he didn't rail against life, his girlfriend, or even God. This time, he railed against the devil and his evil. He began to swear and curse, calling his unseen foe every foul name he could think of. Then ending his sharp words in a brave crescendo, he flung his half-full beer bottle across the clearing and growled out his challenge. He defied Satan, if he was real, to come forth, come forth and face him, one-on-one -on -one in a fight to the finish. If Satan won, he could do what he wished with Brad. But if Brad won, Satan was to restore all he had taken and never trouble Brad again in his life. The challenge rang out from snarled lips and echoed through the surrounding w woods. Brad felt confident and ready. He wouldn't lose. He knew he wouldn't because he never lost. If something did come out of those woods, he was ready. His fists were clenched, and his face was contorted in anger. He shouted his challenge again and again, but alas, nothing happened. His words were only met by the rustling of the autumn leaves and the chilly October breeze. But this angered him even more, and he spouted his challenge one last time with even more rage and conviction. All was quiet for a moment, after the fitful words, last echo died. But then, there was a sound. The sound of something moving within the woods ahead of him. Twigs snapped, and fallen leaves crunched under heavy footfalls. Brad squinted into the shadows of the woods. He didn't see anything. Not at first, anyway. But then something strange came into view. It was tall and smoke-like. It reminded Brad of the creature in the Predator movies when it was in stealth mode. The thing was invisible, yet he could see its form as it stomped towards him. The light seemed to bend and become obscured in the thing's outline, almost like looking through a being composed of water. Brad thought his mind was playing tricks on him, but the thing emerged from the woods. It stood at the edge of the clearing, motionless facing him. Its form was huge and manlike, a thing not clearly seen, yet present all the same. A low guttural growl came from the form as it seemed to crouch for a moment. It then began to move quickly towards Brad. He could hear its heavy footsteps clomping across the ground as it moved toward him. Fear and disbelief rose up inside of Brad as he beheld this uncanny sight. What the hell was that thing? Had he lost his mind? All bravery and confidence then seemed to drain away as Brad stepped backwards, first one step, then another. He then turned and fled as fast as he could down the little path in the woods. As he ran, he could hear something back in the clearing, letting out a piercing, screaming growl. He dared not look back as he bolted out of the woods and down the small embankment. Once at his car, he scrambled inside and jammed the key into the ignition. The car seemed to come alive in a panic as Brad turned the key. He then slammed the car into gear and sped off then down the narrow country road, never stopping until he was back into the familiarity of his own neighborhood. It was on that chilled autumn day when Brad learned there are, that there are things in the universe that should never be trifled with. And to this day, he has never returned to that place where he once challenged the devil to a duel. So what did Brad Johnson see in the woods on that late October day? Was it truly the devil or something else? Was it some unknown animal or predator that he disturbed with his yelling and ranting in the woods? Could this almost invisible being be the thing that is responsible for so many of the people in the world who disappear in the 411 cases? Or was all this simply all in his mind? What do you think?